Welcome to lab 5, motion of a bouncing tennis ball. The problem for this lab is to observe the motion ball and model this motion and the change in energy of the ball to see how it follows the conservation of energy. To accomplish this, I videoed my friend dropping a tennis ball and tracked the video in Tracker. I then created a code using vPython to model the position and energy of the ball as it bounces. The results of this lab are that the model does predict the motion and energy of the ball as it bounces, and it shows that energy is conserved. To do this lab, I videoed my friend dropping a tennis ball from rest and tracked it as it bounced. Here's the video with the tracked points. This graph shows the y position of the ball versus time, and as you can see, the ball bounces back up to a height each time that is lower than where it started. I saved the X and Y position data that is shown here to a CSV file to later incorporate into my code. The fundamental principles I used to analyze the bouncing tennis ball include Newton's second law and the energy principle. Newton's second law was used to calculate and update the position, velocity, and momentum of the ball over time. The energy principle was used to calculate the kinetic, potential, and thermal energies of the ball throughout its path of motion. The system in this scenario is the tennis ball, so the energy of the tennis ball equals the work done by the surroundings. The total change in energy of the ball equals the change in kinetic, gravitational potential, and thermal energies. To create the code, I first input the initial variables, including the mass and radius of the ball, as well as the delta t of 0.001 seconds, and an initial velocity of 0 meters per second starting at the origin. To calculate the net force of the ball, two different situations had to be considered. When the ball is free falling through the air, the only forces acting on it are the force of gravity in the negative y direction and the drag force in the opposite direction. The net force on the ball in the air equals the force of the gravity plus the drag force. When the ball hits the floor, however, another force is introduced. The normal force due to the floor acts on the ball when it hits the floor and acts in the opposite y direction as the force of gravity. The net force on the ball at this, is, at this instant equals the normal force plus the force of gravity. The equations for these forces are shown. In the code, these two different equations are included in an if statement that says that if the position of the ball is at the floor, the net force equals the gravitational plus the normal force, but if not, then the net force is the gravitational plus the drag force. The energy of the ball was calculated by using the energy principle, which states in this case that the change in energy of the system equals the change in kinetic, gravitational potential, and thermal energies. The kinetic energy of the ball is based on its velocity, which changes as it bounces, and the gravitational potential energy is based on the height of the ball, which also changes as it bounces. The thermal energy is calculated by subtracting the kinetic and gravitational potential energies from the total energy. These equations to calculate the energies are entered in the while loop so they can be calculated for the whole motion. Here are the equations in the code to calculate the energy. With everything added in and my CSV file imported in, I hit run module to see a model of the bouncing balls on the left and a graph of its y position on the right. In the model, the blue ball is the predicted tennis ball, and the red ball represents the real ball from the experiment. As you can see, the red ball and blue ball differ slightly as they fall, and this may be due to the fact that the calculated drag force is not exactly the same as the actual drag force on the ball. The drag force seems to be a little stronger than the actual force caused by air resistance. The graph on the right shows the y position of the model ball in blue and the y position of the real ball in red. The two graphs start off matching pretty well and then towards the end they differ quite a bit. The model takes longer to reach the first bounce, so this shows that the drag force may be too large compared to the real drag force because it took longer to reach the same distance. The positions for the first two bounces are close and then the model shows the ball only bouncing two more times instead of three and this may be due to the increased drag force. Error may also have resulted because of, human, because of my human error and not tracking the position of the ball perfectly. 
When the code is run to graph the energy of the tennis ball, the blue represents the kinetic energy, the red represents gravitational potential energy, the green represents thermal energy, and the yellow represents the total energy. The potential energy starts off at its largest at the beginning because the ball is at its highest point at the beginning, and the kinetic energy starts at zero. Just before the ball bounces, its kinetic energy is at its highest and the potential energy is at its lowest. And then at the top of the path, just before the ball starts falling again, the kinetic energy is zero when the gravitational potential energy is high. When the kinetic energy is low, gravitational potential energy is high and vice versa. The total energy is conserved in the system and this is equal to the initial gravitational potential energy of the ball. With each bounce, the ball loses kinetic energy, but because the energy is conserved, this energy becomes thermal energy and the ball gains some heat. This shows that the energy is conserved in the system, it just becomes a different kind of energy.